In the latter half of the 1990s, the price of home computers fell drastically, and whilst this had the positive effect of making such things more accessible to the general public, it also had the negative effect of producing some really terrible hardware. Hello everyone, I'm High Treason, and last video I put a poll up to ask what you'd like to see next, and it seems the K6 won by quite a margin, you know, the unreliable K6, which I'm taking to mean you just want to simply get mad at things that don't work properly. That's just wonderful to know. Thank you ever so much for that, that's just what I wanted. Don't worry about it, I wouldn't have put it there if, if I wasn't happy to do this. Uh, actually, I'm kind of glad, because some of the other things, there's stuff I need that I don't yet have, so... Well, yeah, actually, this was probably the easier option. Uh, I'll keep the pearl in mind next time around, though, but... Yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's start having a look at this thing before, before this gets overly boring, because we don't want it to become overly boring. Not that it already... Uh, Hmm, well anyway, let's let's get on with this. One absolute piece of shit. I mean, look at it. It's a total mess. The, the curse is neat, actually, because it was given to me as part of a complete system by my old neighbours. Back when I was moving house, the case had a seller on 600 in it at that time, and it's probably going to end up with that back in there once I fix it. Some might take offence at the PRNDC number that somebody gouged into the top of it. I mean, we can't remove that, but I don't mind it. It's a part of local history, and I know for a fact I have other things with that engraved in them. It's always a different number. Uh, they were all unique, obviously. The short version is... In the early 2000s, the local council started a group called PRNDC, or Preston Road Neighbourhood Development Company, one goal of which was to get internet access to just everybody on the estate. I mean, I guess we were kind of like the third world of Hull, as it were, uh, which was kind of backwards, because Hull was thought of by some as the internet capital of England, in the mid-90s at least. Uh, kind of ironic that didn't work out, now we only have one landline ISP and... Yeah, it's a little bit useless. I will do a video about that someday. Anyway, the PRNDC gave out fairly low-quality refurbished machines for free, with greatly varying specifications and build quality. You couldn't choose the machine, as far as I remember. I, I think they just gave you one at random out of what they had. So my neighbours were very lucky, as the most common systems seemed to be slower Cyrix 686 models, often time or tiny branded. Anyway, I'll be keeping the case no matter what. This motherboard, though, yeah, I'm not sure about that. This is a TMC AI5 VG Plus version 2, which I had high expectations of, mostly as my other experiences with TMC boards were really good. This old Socket 7 board from TMC was epic, the only Pentium 75 that ever played blood properly, as per the system requirements on the box, which usually just don't stack up. It's a shame the battery killed it, and I can't get another one, but... I might have finally found a board that can match it for my new K5. Maybe we'll look at that someday, I don't know. Uh, probably not any time soon, though. Yeah, this, this TMC board, the no. It's nothing like the old PCI 5.4, though. The layout is rough for a start. Everything's kind of clumped together towards the top corner of the board, whilst there's nothing in the middle. The CPU socket has its heatsink mounting pegs blocked by capacitors, which is just silly. They were clearly hell-bent on keeping the board small. I mean, would it have hurt them to make it an inch wider? They even used a PLCC chip for the BIOS ROM. That isn't the original PLCC, though, because that one, the one the board came with, broke. So yes, I had to find a spare one, which is just absolutely wonderful. You know, I love working with PLCCs. They're just so easy compared to dip. Yeah, totally. The voltage regulators up there run quite close to their thermal limit due to those tiny little heat sinks. I mean, look at the old ECS board here. It doesn't have the ability or need to push anywhere near the amount of power required by a K62, being an earlier plain socket 7 board, and even then that's debatable. I mean, it's really socket 5. But look at the size of the heat sink on this thing. Uh, and that's not even the biggest I've seen. It's a lot larger than the heat sinks on the TMC AI5, though. And even on this ECS, it gets uncomfortably hot. 
I mean, the chain tack, which isn't a very good board in the grand scheme of things, but it's decent, has larger heat sinks. And, well, even the original TMC has larger heat sinks. I mean, look at that. So, yeah, that's from the same company years before. Why'd they start skimping? But, yeah, it it's quite unusual anyway just to see linear voltage regulators on a Super Socket 7 motherboard. Most of them use PWM or similar technologies, which are more efficient and run colder. I guarantee that if you open the case of your modern machine, you won't find linear voltage regulators running the CPU. They're not stable or efficient enough. They just dump a ton of heat, and that, that is literally how they work. They just turn the unused energy into heat. It's a horrible, inefficient, old technology that just isn't really that good. Almost nobody uses it now. It might be all right if you want to light some LEDs up or something, but, I mean, even then, just use resistors, because, I mean, the current's low enough. And... Yeah, man, I, I don't know, man. It, it just isn't a good idea. Well, look at that. Underneath the CPU socket there, those actually look like fats. So maybe this doesn't use linear regulators for the processor. But if that's the case, what do those two linear regulators at the other corner of the board do? Uh, in all honesty, I don't know, and I can't get to them to see the part number or what they do. But, I mean, as I'm dismantling this system anyway, at some point, I'll check it out then and I'll just mention it in a later video if I figure it out. So yeah, as yet the power supply to the processor on this motherboard, it, it's currently unknown. I don't know how it does it or why them regulators are there. Maybe it's in two stages. Maybe that regulates down and these regulate down again. Or maybe these just don't do anything. Uh, who knows? They look very roughly put on compared to the rest of the board. That's actually quite concerning. Hmm. I, I mean, I remember them now I see them, because I remember, like, good god, those are rough, so... Yeah... <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I guess we'll we'll look into it at a later time. I do like the dip switches, though. A lot of late-90s motherboards use these instead of jumpers, and yeah, they're a brilliant idea. I, I like having those. Yeah, but it's probably worth noting the dip switches appear to have been put on backwards, because, as per the documentation, on on the dip switch is off in the manual and obviously vice versa. Uh, so yeah, you could quite easily misset something. Uh, voltage, for example, maybe you could do. And yeah, something could break. Just look out for that if you ever get one of these. Always check dip switches. This is going to bring on a, a new wave of dip switch paranoia for me, I think. Because that's probably potentially dangerous, uh, at least to your wallet, if you want the thing to work. And, yeah, maybe somebody did that before I got this board. I, I don't know, but there's a possibility, I suppose. It's an easy mistake to make. I mean, you would imagine the manual's right, wouldn't you? The chipset is a via MVP3, which is my preferred chipset for Super Socket 7. From what I can tell, earlier revisions of the board used an older chipset, and they topped out at 66 megahertz. The design changed very little between that and the version I have. So, well, I really have to wonder if that's part of the problem with this thing. As in, they took an old 66 MHz plain socket 7 board and just slapped on a 100 MHz chipset. Because, hey, that's bound to work, right? Of course it will. Nothing can possibly go wrong with that idea. I mean, you know, it's, it's only like a mm, 50... 0.3% increase in speed or something, isn't it? I don't know, that's off, off the top of my head mathematics. But yeah, it's, it's no small feat you're asking of the existing infrastructure in the board, are you? Morons. You know, I'm pretty certain, I already said at the start of this, that computers got cheaper towards the end of the 90s, and it really shows here. I mean, they've clearly skimped on this board as much as they possibly could, and it's weird, because you can tell it comes from a company that made some really high-quality stuff. A lot of companies did disappear throughout the Athlon era, the Pentium 3 era, and I don't recall seeing any TMC board made later than this. I think I heard of a K7 one, but I've never seen it, and I can't confirm if it even exists. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know they were making them as late as the K6, and whilst it's easy to get mad at it, it's also slightly depressing, because it really does feel like a board from a dying company. I don't know what their last model of board was, but if this wasn't it, then it, it must have been close. 
Hang on a second. What does that say? Macron power. M Macron power. Well, I think I'm going to have to replace that power supply. I don't want that in there because that's just a recipe for disaster. The CPU is an AMD K62 500 megahertz model, which I'm not going to show you because I'd rather not risk snapping those capacitors off from around the socket. I've already had enough of messing about with this thing as it is. It looks the same as any other K6 though, really, other than the print is green on the top of it. So, well, here's a different model in case you didn't know what K6s look like. I'm pretty certain you probably do. They have that weird heat spreader on them, which AMD likes to put on things at that time. It looks like an Athlon underneath if you pull that off, but yeah, don't pull it off if you can help it. The die's quite fragile, so yeah, that's, that's not something to do without a really good reason. Now I think it's clear I'm going to start ranting about this thing, so before we get there, I'd like to say I really love the K6. I probably like the Pentium 2 a little bit more, but it's really a different class of processor, and the K6 was a fantastic processor. Many people forget that it was really meant to compete with the Celeron, and it was priced as such. They were very, very cheap in the grand scheme of things but often kept up with full-blown Pentium 2 machines at a fraction of the cost. They were absolutely wonderful. Notable technical properties of the processor are that it uses a 32 plus 32 uh, kibibyte level 1 cache. I believe kibibyte is the correct word to use for this. And that's 32k for each data and instructions, not just 32k total. Also, you might remember the next-gen 586 we looked at a few videos back, and I said AMD bought next-gen. Yeah, well, guess who designed the K6? Yep, next-gen. It was once known as the NX686. It's a next-gen processor. This is the sequel to the NX586. Unlike the NX586, which needed its own proprietary socket, the NX686 was adapted to be pin compatible with the Socket 7 Pentium. AMD actually had little to no influence on its design, and basically just bought buildings and equipment for the team before just leaving them to their own devices. I don't begrudge the AMD K6 for any of the problems we are going to see here at all, so keep that in mind before you get mad at me being like, no, the K6 is good. I know it's good. Uh, one thing I will say about it that we're not going to experiment with here is K6s don't have fixed multipliers. So, in the case of mine running at 500 megahertz, if it's too fast, I can clock it down to pretty much anything. I could actually clock it up a bit higher if it's stable. I, I think we could probably get it to 600 megahertz, but... Yeah, I mean, we could probably clock it down to... I don't know, at least 200 megahertz, probably less than that, depending on how the multipliers and the front side bus is wired up on the board. So, very, very broad range, especially if you start turning caches off and stuff. You'd probably emulate quite a f wide range of machines with these things. You can't do that with a Pentium 2, so... Yeah, the K6 has aces up its sleeve, man. I, I do really like them. It's just a shame about this one. Okay, an AGP-2X slot is on the board, which, well, I'd be pretty mad if it wasn't. They do always look weird to me when they're on AT boards, though. I never quite got used to that. I've got an ATI Rage installed in there. I don't remember which model. Well, I mean, whatever. I, I, I don't care. Nothing's going to replace the damn overblown fury I just installed in my old K6, is it? So, yeah, whatever. I didn't even get to show it on my channel. Oh, well, I would have wasted it anyway, so... Hey, cut my losses and move on. Fucking boring Rage 1 to it. I don't even care. Peace. Here's the sound card. It's an O64. Uh, not sure which variant. Don't care. Interestingly, TMC made their own sound cards, and one of them came with this board. But it uses an FM801 chip, which is really interesting for a few reasons, at least to me. Might have to make a short video on that someday. I was going to include it here, but yeah, I, I can't for reasons we'll go over soon. Basically, I need Windows 2000, and well, there's there's a bit of an obstacle there, which we'll get to, we'll get to it. Anyway, the All 64 is meh. They work. I don't like them as much as the Yamaha 724, but they're probably a better fit for a K6, and 
uh, well, I don't have a Yamaha 724 now, and I can't track down another one as good as what I had, so fuck it. All 64s all the way, I guess. Yeah, you know what? I might even use the FM-801 in my shitty Pentium 2 build that I'm going to do. Because why the hell not? What does it matter now? Fucking lousy-ass Pentium 2. Does anybody recognise that motherboard? Hey, you know, I might have even found a damn processor by the time I shoot this. Yeah, you know, and this has taken ages to do, by the way, because the things keep going wrong. It, bloody K6, man. But yeah, you know, that, that, that Pentium 2, it's like that fucking DFI motherboard. I can't get rid of the damn thing. It just keeps coming back. I want to move away from it, but something always gets in the way. And I mean, oh, I'm not even going into it today. Well, now is probably a good time to inject uh, a thank you to people who have offered to help while I'm complaining about this. You know, there, there are people who've offered to help me out with this Pentium 2, and I do really appreciate that. That's really awesome. And, you know, people like Video Sense Frontier, uh, the Flying Scotsman, I think he calls his channel now, but, you know, he offered to send me a motherboard. And the reason I'm not accepting help from people is I know I'm going to be disappointed with this thing either way. And so I'd rather be disappointed of my own volition than feel bad about, you know, being disappointed with something that was essentially a gift. You know, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather dig my own hole with this. It's just the way I am. I'm, I'm kind of like that. But I am thinking I may actually have managed to track some parts down that are very, very close to what I had. So I'm, I'm starting to think might have to go on a massive eBay buying spree. Could be a bit expensive, but I would just waste the money anyway. So, I mean, what difference is it going to make by now? So, who knows? Maybe someday there will be another Pentium 2. Or maybe there won't. I'm still weighing up what I want to do about it, but we'll see. Anyway, back to this K6 before I go on too much of a tangent. Oh, look at that. A 3 com Ethernet card. Well, we all know what those do. Who cares? I'm not going into it whatever the hard drive i'm not taking it out it's a hitachi death star and somehow it still works it sounds like shit Oh, that's just wonderful. That's just music, that is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I could listen to that all day. Actually, I, I do kind of like the sound of hard drives. They sound cool, but, yeah, that I'm not sure how long that'll live. I mean, it's over 15 years old. How the hell is it still running? I mean, they don't call them the Death Star for nothing. I mean, it must be the only Death Star not to just commit suicide for no reason. It's strange this drive doesn't work in my Athlon where it almost ended up. That was the candidate drive for my Athlon. And when I say it doesn't work, that, that is to say it does, but the Athlon doesn't. It becomes really unreliable when it's installed in there for some reason. The, the machine just becomes unstable, like even when it's not using the hard drive. Weird. Uh, in the end, I just figured that as the K6 is rubbish anyway, well, it was a fitting drive to install in here, and it seems to have no tangible effect, so if it does, I just haven't noticed behind the shitstorm of everything else that goes wrong. Now, oh, the CD-ROM drive decided to stop working. Well, actually, it does work, but only with every other motherboard I've tested it in, so, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work with this one. I can't explain that, but, hey, it's hardly a surprise, because, I mean, we've got to share the channel, which sometimes does stop them working. The second IDE channel doesn't work. Hmm, yeah, plug a drive in there, and it'll crash, and erase the CMOS settings most of the time. In fact, doing nearly anything will cause a crash and erase the CMOS settings, or, or drive the PNP hardware detection system absolutely nuts. I mean, what the hell, man? The more this happens, the more I start having flashbacks to really, really unpleasant things. Oh, well, what the hell, man? I can't even have a mental breakdown properly because there's no shower in here. Uh... Oh, that's freezing. That's fucking freezing. There's, there's a fire in here, why did I do that? Uh, yeah, no shit, I don't actually have hot water in this house. It, 
It's fucking wonderful, right? I thought that was a human right or something in the UK, but uh, I guess not. Well, as I said, no CD-ROM drive. You know what? Install some fucking SCSI for the sake of this video and have done with it. Uh, by the way, I thought I'd lost this drive. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're back tech wondered why the hell has the dude bought a CD burner for SCSI? I sent him one. Uh, I thought I'd lost it and it turned up broken in a box I didn't put it in. Some have got dislodged, I've repaired it, so yeah, good, now I can finally use this damn thing. Oh god, what now? Yeah, well, that's- <laughs> the installing the SCSI card has broken my capture card. Or as in, the machine doesn't want to know, I'm sure the capture card still works if I install it somewhere else, so well, we'll keep that. You know, maybe it'll go good somewhere else. I've got other machines using ATI cards with that connector, why the hell not? Yeah, <laughs> well, fuck, you know, I guess I can't show you that now, but- Here's the card. It only works with ATI video cards. It uses their proprietary feature connector, and it uses the same chipset as one of those other cards I wanted to look at. So we'll be able to get a rough idea of what it was capable of some other day, if nothing else, if I don't just show you the card itself, because it probably will still work. The motherboard supports ATX and AT power supplies, obviously not at the same time, I don't imagine that would end well, a bit of double penetration there, it's just going to end in an almighty explosion I would imagine. Okay, well, are we done here? Can I start this thing up yet? As we already established, things aren't great, and it might crash or lose its CMOS settings at boot randomly. Also, only 128 megs of RAM. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. You know why? Because the board goes absolutely balmy if I install more, and anyway, using anything but that middle slot seems to cause it to lock up now, so... Yeah, that's just come on very suddenly. Who knows? Who cares? 128 meg is enough for Solitaire and Windows 98, so, well, it'll do, I'm not going to complain. Ah, oh, well, as it turns out, it may not be enough for Solitaire, because, yeah, the, the mouse randomly stops working, regardless of whether it's PS2 or serial. So, well, I, I guess you can play Solitaire with a keyboard, but it's not very good, is it? Let's be honest. I don't even like Solitaire, man! What the hell am I doing?! Ah, oh, well, that problem aside, the system will pass post, and we can start the operating system. Oh, wait, fuck. Well, we can wait for this fucking 3Com card. Seriously, why can't I shut this off? Why does the 3Com utility not work? You know what? Screw you, 3Com. Your later cards are good, but the firmware just blows ass. Enjoy your acquisition by HP. Yeah, rather predictably, it doesn't seem as though 3 comma are actually to blame for that. I ran the utility on the card in this motherboard here, and, well, yeah, we can enable and disable the managed boot agent and everything else. That configurator just starts up and works. So, yeah. Rather predictably, seems to be a problem with the K6 motherboard. Gee, who would have thought? The system dual boots Windows 98 and Windows 2000 Professional, which it... Oh, come on, what the fuck now? <laughs> the system boots Windows 98 second edition only because that's probably the right option for a K6. Probably. I I mean, it's not like Windows 2000 would be fucking cool or anything, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it probably sucks ass or something, right? I, I mean, it must do. Surely. I. Oh, god damn it. Right, well... Well, we're here. So now what? Very little, because I've, I've got nothing to run. Or nothing that will run. Need Speed 3 won't run. Which is a shame, because I wanted to see how it held up against the Athlon. Guess I'm not meant to play that game or something, because it always goes wrong for me, which is weird. It used to work fine. I don't think it's the game, it's just the machines I happen to be exposing it to. Interstate 76 crashes to desktop within seconds, without so much as an error message, so... I'm not sure I can even bother to reinstall that for you. We could try Atlantis. Oh god, it runs like shit. As it is above, so it is below. From her palace on Atlantis, Queen Rhea rules over an island of peace and plenty. Where the seasons come and go, yet time seems to stand still. 
Go up the steps and ask the guards near the pool. Well, that is absolutely appalling. And to be honest, when I think back to it, and I know I'm correct without even going back and checking, I did a review of Atlantis The Lost Tales. It's a, a really cool game. I like it. It's not to everybody's taste, that kind of thing, but that's my kind of thing, so I like it. Um, I guess that was sort of the point. Anyway, it's uh, it was running on my old K6 at a lower clock speed. I think we had it at about 350 megahertz. It might have been 333. I found that sort of the sweet spot for this game. And yeah, that was my old K6. So there's not really much excuse for this one to run it so terribly. I threw it in at the last minute, Atlantis, and I didn't have a script for it running it. So I'm like, well, it might run it really well. It would be cool if it did. Um, it doesn't really, so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm glad I threw that in. It's a very good example of my K6 was never really shown on the channel, my original one. You just saw pieces of it. Um, well, yeah, th that's a very good showcase for how different these two machines are. And a very good showcase of that this isn't representative of the average K6. I do really want to stress throughout this video that if you're not familiar with the AMD K6, this is the exception to the rule. They're not normally like this. If you, even the cheap motherboards. I think I showed a shot of a, an MVP4 board that doesn't have AGP. Even that will run better than this. And that's not a brilliant board. That was a very, very low cost budget board. It's quite simple. It's heavy on integration. Not really, you know, that well made. But it'll work a lot better than this. Even even a relatively crap K6 will work better than this one. The the processor is absolutely awesome. So as as a whole, it's a wonderful platform. Just not this time. What about Broken Sword 2? I mean, come on, man. Like a low end K5 or something can run Broken Sword 2. I mean, it's not even that much of an achievement. Even then, it stutters occasionally, so I, there's something wrong with this. I'm pretty certain of it. Uh huh, yeah. Right, well. With what else? Play Solitaire. So I guess I don't need to build that cellar on 266 anymore. There's no point now. Benchmarks at. You know what? I don't actually care. If you want to read the numbers, go ahead. To be honest, th I, they actually do look good. I mean, shit, this thing should be flying, and it probably can. And in fact, there's one example I have where it does, when it works. But I just can't get the... It, it's like it can't get the power down, mostly because of the instability. I wanted to run your past Mark 7, which I know it would limp through, but that wants Windows 2000 as a minimum. I might have gotten past Mark 6 working, but if I did, you'll be seeing that, and I'm not reading it out because I genuinely don't care. And to be honest, I'm doubtful it will run. I, I, I just don't care. I really, really don't. I've had enough of this machine, and it does literally nothing useful. It can't even run DOS games reliably because more often than not, all I get is a black screen. I managed to get Duke Nukem 3D running to show you the R64. Forgetting it was a bad example because a podsy couldn't write audio drivers worth shit. I mean, I love 3D realms, but good god, their MIDI drivers were terrible! They just don't work! What is it with them and sound? I mean, you've got Duke Nukem 2 that doesn't run properly on many sound cards, and we got, like, the build engine games where the MIDI's just dodgy and the audio detection is just crap. It, it's... It's a shame, really. At least it's not so bad, I guess, but... Yeah, I'm amazed it works in here. What the hell else can we do with this O64? Well, it has a wavetable synth, which isn't great. I don't actually think that's one... I mean, I don't like most wavetable synths in general. 
And yeah, this is a bit weak. Uh, we'll use that MIDI I used to test uh, that C media. sound better than the C media, I guess. Uh, to some degree, at least it's in tune and it's in time, so well, there's that. It's not brilliant, but it'll do. One thing I will say for the O64 is I think it's underused. It can sound really good, but just nobody ever really utilised it properly. Uh, at least it was very rare. And it's a bit of a shame. Uh, another point is it has the best damn bagpipe patch I've ever heard, but not much music outside of, like, backwater Scotland uses bagpipes, so there's not really much point in having that on there, but it's a nice touch anyway. Yeah, well... What else can we do? Well, the R64 can obviously play waves. It's not just a, a MIDI card. It plays PCM as well. Well, it doesn't in this machine, I guess. You know, it's really strange it actually starts working again intermittently, so I, I, I just don't know. It's not a little bit rate MP3. I mean, you can see the file size. This isn't 8 meg MP3. It's It's... It's medium bitrate, it's like 192k per second. So, I don't know what the problem is. It, it's just intermittent. It does it sometimes. Works in every other motherboard, so we'll put it down to the motherboard. So overall, I've essentially built a rather expensive doorstep, and it's probably not even going to be good at that. So, yeah, benchmarking scores change nothing. The machine has earned its place in the dismantling queue, and it'll stay there until it no longer exists, which is a real shame. But it does nothing even remotely useful, and I can use the case to do something better. You know, maybe I could fix that Celeron 600 up. There wasn't much wrong with it. I mean, it was a cheap budget system with relatively crappy parts, but outside of the dead hard drive and some odd issues with the keyboard not working after a few minutes, it seems to be fine. It would probably work better than this, and I can likely get it to about the same level of performance. Yeah, I'm done with this one. <laughs> it's just not happening. I really do think we should go back to the processor, really. If you're new to this, don't blame the K6. It, it, it is an epic processor. We've established in the past that SpeedSys is really, really good at testing a CPU's performance without being influenced by the rest of the machine, at least not to any particularly noticeable level. And we can see there just how well it does. This TMC board is an exception to the rule. Whilst the next-gen 586 had lacking performance in many places, the K6 made up for it big time, and it paved the way for AMD to build the Athlon, likely employing former next-gen designers alongside their newly gained Alpha Team members too at that stage. And we know the legacy from that point on, and we know just how widespread the Risk 8 6 concept is today. I mean, it's everywhere. And it saddens me to see this otherwise brilliant K6 being trampled by this awful motherboard. I feel that it deserves a chance to shine in a better board than this, and I'm certainly going to look into fixing that <laughs> somewhere down the line. Because, like I said, just that, that speed sys score alone, I think, shows this is a capable processor. And I think pretty much everyone watching this will know the K6 is a capable processor, and this board is a complete waste of that processor. So who knows? Maybe we'll we'll see pieces of this machine again someday, or maybe not. We'll we'll see what happens. I'm really sorry I couldn't show you much more, but this thing barely works, and my patience with it has run out. Uh, there is one surprise. I got test drive off road three to work, but the sound card decided not to work, so no sound, which is hard to capture anyway. But I mean, yeah. Uh, hmm. I didn't... Yeah, it... 
I, mm, it's not really very good. I mean, I'm, we might be pushing the, the rage a little bit there, but I'm just, I don't think it's really cut out for this. Well, wasn't that just fucking wonderful? I mean, yeah, that's the last time I do a poll. No, I'm just kidding. We'll probably do more of those in future because, well, if I'm struggling to decide, then I might as well let you decide for me because, I mean, well, you know, I've, you make up the majority of the group here, I'm just me. There's like a thousand and odd of you, which, you know, is, still baffles me. It's still something I I don't hold in my head. It's just like how far this channel has gone from a stupid college jerk. And I, I don't know that I'll ever get used to it. To me, that's massive. <laughs> it's, it's tiny in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, every, you're all awesome that but yeah I'll, t I'll keep in mind what the poll results were and I think next on the list was the Pentium Pro rebuild so I better get on and stuff a hard drive in there permanently instead of just the test bed crap I've been jamming in there it hasn't changed a lot since its original guys and I might combine it with one of the other videos because I don't know that it's actually going to be that long but yeah uh, We'll see what happens. It probably won't be the next thing. I'm actually thinking I might stab another video in the middle. Uh, probably CD burning in Windows 3.1. I don't know how interesting it'll be, but after this, I want to work on something smaller, and that's a relatively small project. It should be quite easy to do. And so, yeah, I'm not ignoring the pearl if that's what I do next. It's just that... I, I want to work on something smaller before I take on another machine because this has just been a complete headache. I've adapted the script so many times because of things not working that I thought did work and in the end I've just gone with it as it is. You know, if footage didn't show it's because something didn't run, whatever. I'm done with the K6, it's getting dismantled, it'll be replaced by something better at a later time. Um, yeah, that's that's just the way this is. This has turned out. Hopefully, not too bad. But it could have been, it could be awful. I haven't done a, a bit of editing yet. Uh, this is the I think the very last thing I'm filming for it is this shot, unless I've missed something, which I almost certainly will have missed something. I always do. Another thing to note is I, it's high time I redid that channel trailer. So yeah, if that shows up, just ignore it. <laughs> Feel free to ignore it because. The one I have now is really, really out of date. I think I was still using that dodgy space circuit board. Looks like a one of those crappy old educational videos kinds of things, the intro. And I still did some shit that I don't do now with this channel. So, yeah, that needs updating. I'll try and make it shorter and stuff. Uh, maybe double upload it with that uh, CD drive video or something if I do that. I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be fiddling with settings and <laughs> behind the scenes and hopefully I don't spam people's notification boxes or something by accident. I'll try my best not to do anything silly, but if I do, well, this is my apology in advance. Otherwise, I don't think I've got really anything interesting to say. Other well, than, again, I do want to stress this is not a typical scenario for the K6. It, it's a fantastic processor and it's really saddening to see it being wasted in that board. And the other parts in that machine are pretty good. That video card, it's not bad. I'm never going to feel great about it because it's not as good as the card I had before and I don't think I can get another one of those. But it should be good enough and there's nothing wrong with it the rest of the system there's really nothing wrong with it it just doesn't work well with that motherboard that motherboard is 99 percent the problem i would think and so yeah i i think we will probably keep the rest of it but that isn't going to stick around and that's that's a shame because i've liked every other tmc i've had but that one's just a waste of a, a good system, that motherboard. We could make something good with the parts there. The, the ingredients are there, except for the spoiled flour that we're pouring in. Anyway, uh, yeah, that is quite literally it, I do believe. So I am High Treason. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it won't take too long to get something else done, but, well, you never know. I can never make guarantees, but... 
yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, won't we? Thank you for watching. I think I already said that. You know, someday I won't mess up my outro. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with it. I'm out of here. Have fun. Now here's one for you because I know there's quite a wide range of people watch this uh, channel like people from all different countries and walks of life, different genders, different ages, different occupations, everything. It's quite broad uh, the demographic here and so well there's no harm in pointing out that if you didn't know some Shadow Warrior prototypes, uh, you know the DOS game from came out in 97 but some of the prototypes are as far back as 94 I, I did a live stream with one on my second channel actually it was pretty fun uh, in my K5 which I really like the the new K5 build I've got I'm, I'm very happy with it I don't know if it'll ever get a full video here but yeah it's it's fantastic machine it's right here because we've been using it to try and uh, get some insight onto this uh, one Beta uh, 950908, which has uh, parallel port dongle protection, and I can't capture the signals fully because I don't have the equipment. The best I can do is just snag a few pins over a, a parallel interlink cable, which is the best anybody's got so far, but it doesn't really tell us anything. If anybody out there does software cracking and is bored, well, you can download Shadow Warrior Classic for free on Steam and you'll get the prototypes and feel free to have a go at it. I think a lot of people would appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, just a, a note for any bored crackers that might be out there. Crackers. You know, that sounds like... That could be... I'm not being racist. <laughs> I don't mean that kind of cracker. Hey, anyway, I can say that, can't I? Because look at me. I am black. I can say that all I want. Well, yeah, fine. <laughs> you see, this is what the world does to you. God damn it. Well, that's ruined my little... Ah, oh, jeez. Well, anyway, I got the gist of that across, so I'm going to just leave it there.